Hazel understood this life inside and out by the time she reached 45. One overcast September day, her father's suicidal dash beneath the wheels of a truck, whose inebriated driver sent it to the sidewalk, where it crashed into a bus stop, killing a few people inside, and the screeching of tires, her mother's scream, and her happy childhood in the 1980s all came to an end. Her father, who lost his life in the process, was able to rescue tiny Hazel from beneath the massive vehicle at the last second. After enduring extensive medical treatment for several injuries, her mother passed away, leaving 13-year-old Hazel alone in the harsh world that her parents had done their utmost to protect her from. Her mother is a university professor, and her father is a Communist Party worker. Try to instill the finest in their daughter, since they had accomplished a great deal in the otherwise depressing life of a Soviet. Fantastic chances for life, a renowned music teacher, and an excellent school. An intoxicated truck driver with a terrified expression behind the windshield smashed everything in an instant. She was abandoned as a total orphan when she was under 15. Even though their offspring survived, her grandfathers and grandmothers too passed away young. In addition, she had an aunt, a cousin of her father, who resided in a small town, was incessantly envious of their family, and seldom spoke to them. She had little success in life and put the blame for her shortcomings on everyone but herself. In contrast to her ordinary existence, Hazel's parents' prosperous family bred envy and hate in her, which she had to suppress on the rare occasions when they did cross paths. And Miranda accepted gifts from her cousin with apparent reluctance. After that, Hazel was placed in an orphanage, where she was subjected to abuse from her peers, who rejected her as a team member and immediately thought she wasn't one of their kind. But as it happened, Hazel was capable of taking care of herself and wasn't going down without a struggle. Hazel knew all of a sudden, even to herself, that she could not afford to be a nobody. A new Hazel emerged on the rubble of the former contented life. Cutthroat, cunning, and almost cruelly merciless. The girl with the angelic face swiftly gained control over the pack leaders and gradually rose to the top of the orphanage's hierarchy. After the advent of perestroika, the government began allowing its people to own and operate small enterprises. The teenage Hazel came to the realization that she had no one to rely on except herself in this new society, devoid of social protection of any type. Just business, no parents, no relatives, no particular feelings. The girl could not afford to return to improvised beds because she would always remember the horrors of orphanage poverty. Bland blankets and acrid porridge. When Hazel made her first real money, it caught the attention of local racketeers. Though she was mentally ready for it, the thugs' demands and threats, which stemmed from their reckless lifestyle as gangsters, left the aspiring businesswoman so enraged that she unintentionally reached for the blade when they told her to turn to the wall and bend over it. She had learned to advocate for herself through her time spent in the orphanage. You have to use less diplomatic means when dialogue or counter-threats do not work. The knife Hazel was given as a present while she was still at the orphanage was one of these instruments. The sword went clean through the would-be rapist's liver, a boy who liked and courted the brave girl. The other criminals soon realized their foolishness and hastily fled, leaving their corpses to bleed to death. Interrogations, detention cell, trial, a finding of extreme self-defense, and eventually a prison sentence. Fortunately, the man lived, and Hazel received a light sentence. Five years later, the girl was still hardened by the prison. She had a reputation in the criminal community for standing outside the jail gate. The youngster did not need to fear retaliation now that her bloody enemy had been shot dead during a criminal standoff. Her lack of funds was the only thing preventing her from starting over, but since she was still young and experienced in the world, this wasn't a major issue. In the mid-1990s, enterprising individuals made money from everything. Hazel saw that the Russian privatization of assets offered her limitless opportunities to make up for lost time and establish herself as a respected figure in her city's economic community. Hazel disliked being invited to social events, but occasionally she had to accept the invites in order to establish her social standing. 
The upside of this was that, in addition to courtier chains and red coats, one could meet incredibly intelligent and fascinating people at these kinds of parties. Hazel did, in fact, once encounter a man who struck her as intelligent and fascinating. She had the impression that the young man seated across from her was not like the majority of those present. Furthermore, it went beyond his business. Oscar proved to be a fascinating conversation partner who exhibited excellent listening skills. Hazel told him about her previous experiences, steering clear of the unpleasant and sinister aspects. The nightmares of incarceration were no longer as disturbing to her. Her days in the orphanage suddenly felt like a difficult but fascinating adventure, and the anguish of losing her parents gave way to a calm thankfulness for them. She might look forward to a new life. She occasionally couldn't get rid of one awful recollection, which kept her up at night. Her kid, the little ball of joy, left her life far too soon. Nearly all of the inmates in the women's prison camp were female. Administration, guards, and prisoners. Rarely, though, were they exceptions. Caleb, the security chief, was one of those rare outliers. Whom Hazel briefly and spectacularly fell in love with. They were both adult consenting parties. Hazel found it difficult to resist the physiology and was unaware of how she became pregnant. A boy was born to a female prisoner. A strange disease started to spread throughout the entire wing where Hazel and her child were living after the prison administration covered up the incident and scheduled her release on parole. One security guard and a few prisoners died from severe poisoning. Hazel was also struck, as was her infant. Hazel drifted in the darkness between life and death for two days. They informed her that her tiny, red-haired boy had not survived when she awoke. After a few years, Hazel stopped screaming when she woke up in the middle of the night, but the birthmark on her young son's arm, which was located just below the elbow, was still visible. Go on and let the past remain the past. Oscar and Hazel made the decision to combine their personal and professional lives. A pricey status wedding and a brand new home, a full estate in a posh neighborhood, came before true happiness. The young pair gave birth to a daughter. The happy pinnacle of life, for which Hazel had been striving for so long, had arrived. This is how it seemed to be going to stay forever. However, fate is unforgiving and indifferent to the person in front of her. Losses take the place of fate's favor, and a dark streak typically follows a white one. When visiting Austria on business. It was a helicopter crash in the highlands for Oscar. Nobody made it out alive. Before Hazel had time to grieve over her husband, she saw that Arya, her daughter, was becoming less animated, had almost stopped laughing, and frequently woke up screaming at night. The physician's decision nearly broke Hazel. The girl has a severe illness. Treatment will prolong her life, but a miracle is necessary to save her. The greatest physicians, pricey clinics abroad, and operations. Delayed the conclusion, even if successful. The girl was disappearing. Hazel gave up her job to spend more time with her daughter. Hazel was unable to locate a suitable caretaker despite her best efforts. Despite not being able to locate the ideal person, Hazel's intuition never failed her. Arya also has a severe fear of strangers. Hazel and her daughter had just left the toy store to buy another doll when they suddenly discovered one day, while strolling around the park, that she had forgotten her purse there. Arya hasn't been able to play with her age group lately, and her dolls have completely taken the place of pals. In heavy traffic, Hazel could not afford to cross the street. She would never forget the drunk driver's face, and she was terrified of losing another loved one in a car crash. Glancing around, she noticed a young man sitting on a seat in a nice suit who didn't appear to be a thug or anything. Oddly, she had found it quite impossible to even consider leaving her kid in the care of someone else, even for a mere two minutes. But for some reason, this guy gave her complete confidence. Could you please take care of my child for a few minutes, young man? She turned to the man and said, I'll be back in no time, 
hoping he would agree to assist her. Well, why not? The man stated, I don't want to trouble my daughter over the fact that I left my handbag in a store across the street. Would you be able to spend a few minutes with her? Take caution and move quickly. Grinning, the man remarked, really, try to be quick, I'm a little afraid of kids. Hazel paused in shock as she was leaving the store, her misplaced handbag in hand. Her eyes were so unbelievable to her. Clutching the boy's neck, Arya sat on his lap and whispered something in his ear. Arya's smile could be seen even from her back. Arya had been waiting for someone just like this. And she was going to do everything in her power to make sure this man was here. How are you, sweetheart? Hazel asked as she approached the bench. You weren't afraid to be alone yourself, were you? Mommy, I wasn't alone, the girl replied, holding onto the guy's neck. This dude and I were together. He's wonderful, and his name is like my father's, Oscar. I see you've even had time to get acquainted. Good for you, Hazel remarked with a smile. My name is Hazel. I'm the mother of this clingy girl. Oscar. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to meet you. The pleasure is all mine, Oscar replied. This was not half as scary as I thought. Your daughter is a wonder, and she's very different from all the others. And then, unexpectedly, Arya pecked him on the cheek. Let's play some more, the girl asked. Well, I'm not going anywhere so far, Oscar said. I'm totally free until Christmas. Yippee! Arya cried. Christmas. Is it soon? In three months? Hazel added automatically and then checked herself. Oscar, could you hear me out? I have a proposal for you that is probably pretty unexpected. Throughout Hazel's conversation with Oscar, Arya refused to get off his lap. Hazel even felt a slight sting of jealousy seeing this, but it only further convinced her that she was making the right choice. Oscar also made decisions quickly. Life itself had taught him to assess situations swiftly, and besides, he was indeed free until Christmas. His morning job interview had gone nowhere. The year and a half he had spent in a young offender institution had marred his reputation considerably. Now, he could only dream about getting a decent job that matched his competencies. It was all due to a trivial fight in which he had been defending himself and feeling sorry for himself. Not even knowing his parents and having no parental guidance, he had slowly but surely climbed up the ladder because he simply could not afford to give up or back down. Yes, Oscar had already encountered a few obstacles, but he remained steadfast in his belief that his best days were still ahead of him. He knew that to succeed, one had to persevere in the game of life. After Christmas, a friend had promised him a position at a computer service center, a field he was passionate about and knowledgeable in. All he had to do was wait a little longer. Following that, he would secure an engaging job, enroll in college, and a whole new world of opportunities would open up for him. Hazel's proposition had struck a chord as well. Surprisingly, during the short time Oscar spent with little Arya, he had grown deeply attached to her. It was something he had long yearned for in his life, a sense of someone caring about him. I agree, Oscar responded when Hazel had finished explaining her proposal. However, as a potential employer, I must inform you that I have a criminal record from my time in prison. If that doesn't deter you, I'm ready for the job. That is, unless you're having second thoughts already. Hazel turned to Arya and asked, Arya, would you mind if Oscar came to live with us in our house? Great, the girl exclaimed. I thought as much. We'll be friends for a long time. The three months passed by like a single day. During this period, Hazel never once regretted her decision. Oscar proved to be exceptionally polite and caring toward Arya. She could listen to his stories for hours or spend time creating unique jewelry that only Oscar knew how to make. Aria's smile returned, and the positive emotions she experienced worked wonders for her health. The doctors confirmed Hazel's cautiously optimistic outlook, 
her daughter was on the road to recovery. It was nothing short of a miracle, a reminder that miracles couldn't be entirely ruled out, and luck had a role to play. All of this was thanks to Oscar, as Hazel's eyes sparkled with gratitude. When Oscar discovered Hazel's backstory, she became an inspirational figure to him. Despite all the challenges life had thrown her way, she had achieved everything through her own determination. She never faltered, and bitterness never took hold of her. Hazel embodied the kind of mother Oscar had often daydreamed about during his nights at the orphanage. One particular Christmas Eve, Hazel was roused from her slumber by some commotion coming from the kitchen. Recently, Arya, who had noticeably grown stronger, had taken a keen interest in cooking and enjoyed preparing meals under Oscar's guidance. I'm a girl, and I want to learn how to cook, she would repeat as her mantra. Hazel was completely supportive of this, especially since Oscar had been pleasantly surprising her by helping with household chores and showcasing his culinary skills. I had plenty of free time to read cooking books because we didn't have much else in prison, he joked as he walked out of his bedroom. Hazel, curious, silently approached the kitchen door, gently pushing it ajar. What she witnessed was nothing short of astonishing, far surpassing the impact of a nuclear explosion. A shimmering cloud of flour danced in the sunlight, streaming through the curtains. Arya sat at the table, her focus resembling that of an adult as she meticulously sorted freshly washed cherries into separate little piles. Oscar, in his element, kneaded dough in a large pot, muttering to himself and occasionally addressing Arya, the pies are for Christmas, the rest is for the missus. As Arya noticed her mother standing in the doorway, she burst into laughter. Mommy. We're going to have stuffed pastries for Christmas, I washed the cherries myself, and we're making stewed fruit too. Good morning, Hazel. Did we wake you up? Sorry about that, we'll try to be quieter, Oscar said apologetically, but Hazel remained speechless, overwhelmed by the enchanting scene before her. A beam of sunlight streamed through the window, casting its warm glow onto the guy's muscular arms. In that moment, Hazel noticed a distinctive birthmark, the very same one located just below his right elbow. It could only be one thing, and Hazel slowly sank to the kitchen floor in disbelief. The camp administration had concealed the truth from Hazel during her time of confinement. The boy hadn't succumbed to his illness, he had been sent to an orphanage, given a new name, new labels, and thrust into a harsh existence devoid of a mother or any family. Subsequently, an unjust prison sentence led him to a life in a delinquent facility. It was a serendipitous encounter in an autumn park that had transformed his entire life. Both Oscar and Hazel, there was no doubt about it now, recognized the profound sense of kinship that had blossomed between them on that fateful fall morning. An impulsive, unplanned proposal, Oscar's swift acceptance with barely a second thought, and even Aria's remarkable recovery, all of it was a result of this extraordinary family reunion. Indeed, the power of family love and warmth had worked wonders beyond imagination.